Hey, Jared. Hey, Glenn. What's busy? Up? You busy? I just finished supper. <laughs> oh. I fed the animals, and it's still light outside. Mm-hmm. So I'm available. <laughs> cool. So I, I put up your your post. Yeah. Good. And um, what um, what what inspired that post? The cell. Oh, the cell. Yeah. Did they give you a reason of why they wanted you to post? Well, they they said that everybody in the world except us believes that um, everything they do they do for other people who are alive or for themselves. Everything they do, however, forget that there's a whole slew of people who came, lived, and left. And nobody cares about them beyond just a few years after they die. And yet, most of them are stuck in a place to which you can give whatever name you want, but purgatory seems to be the name religion uses. And those people are looking for a chance to move on and get into what we call the fifth dimension, what religion calls heaven or paradise, more than likely. And uh, there is much more... Uh, to be done in the period of time described by the big eight O that will expire in uh, 2058, give or take four years. And they want to get it going. And they want to get it going as soon as possible to have the uh, transfer of some people, millions of them, into paradise to replace the ones that were moved there by the nuns. How could the nuns do that? Mother Superior had been given the right to pardon, which has now been transferred to Jennifer. Why would they? And, And a lot of nuns, most of them are... In, in paradise if they followed the instructions of Mother Superior. And they're uh, going to be deported, if you wish, uh, refugees without authority to be there. And they're going to go to the bottom of the line in purgatory. And they want replacements out of purgatory into paradise. People who will know more about how history evolved in the world and who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. Politicians are basically 
uh, naive participants at best, uh, while the bureaucracy in the background runs the show, and steal money from Canadians and pass it on to the UN. In Canada here, the same thing applies to every country of the world. They run the border. And as the guy that kidnapped Jennifer told her, we are the government of Canada, not the politicians. So the people who have uh, lived are are non-livers now. (laughs) (laughs) And, And many of them deserve to move. So between now and... 2058, give or take four years, the job has to be completed because that will be the end of the world as we know it. In that time, you can imagine the original people before the Ice Age, who had been in existence for a minimum of 130,000 years, think about how long a time that was. And yet, they were only a few million people on the planet. And there was no way for them to, how would you call it, uh, in in modern day language, to learn all the lessons that needed to be learned and put into a knowledge computer so that all of the lessons they had learned over 130,000 years could be considered to be the a big brain and that big brain needed to verify that all they believed to be true was in fact true but the numbers that they were just didn't make it possible you had to run a big laboratory. Of course, the word is divided into labor and Tories. The the uh, political parties of England are called labor and Tories. And that laboratory had to consist of at least as many people alive as had lived and died in the past. And you can't make that happen and still run the show if if those people who are going to be in power could control the people that put them there, then the laboratory for the purpose of the original people doesn't work. So what you had to see happen is, think think of the Ice Age as a big mountain. 8,000 years to the top, 8,000 years to the bottom. That's the Ice Age. The original people 
clean off the planet of as much of the things they had done and go into hiding underneath the mountain. And then they start building a new society on the downslope on the other side of the mountain from the 8,000 years going up and 8,000 years going down, you're looking at 16,000 B.C. is the top of the mountain. Coming down on the other side, 8,000 brings you to 8,000, and that's where they begin to build their laboratory. To do that, they, they build competing groups. One group in charge called the media. One group that runs the show for reasons of diversion called politicians today. And another group that actually does the work of the laboratories and steals from the coffers of the state they are in and sends it to a central headquarters, which today we call the United Nations. As the group of people grows from 8,000 B.C. to zero, you're working basically with a number that says, okay, boys, the next 2,000 years is where we got to get this job done. And that's the dividing line between B.C. and A.D. in the years. And the numbers grow, and everybody that's born is genetically engineered to play a role in a laboratory. And all of their knowledge gained is funneled down like an ant takes information, takes things off the surface of the planet and brings it down to the queen. Well, the queen in our terms is the United Nations. UN in the language they were using at the time, French, is uh, number one. And by bringing everything to a central point and providing awards for the people who are the best ants on the surface, has ants, then they can bring the information to their underground computer. And once they have confirmed something they had in the computer or they found out and added to the computer, they give the person on the surface an award whether it be a Nobel Prize for physics or medicine or art or what have you, this means you have been worthy of confirming what we believe or adding to what we believe is true and 
we want other people on the planet to work in that same direction, so we'll give you a prize. Nobel Peace Prize, for example. But you have it in Academy Awards and Stanley Cups and Super Bowls and <laughs> art of all kinds, the, uh, the art that comes in sculpture or painting or uh, theater. And now they have what they wanted. What they wanted more than anything else <clears throat> is an understanding of the universe we live in. And to understand the universe that we live in, you have to go there. Either by human presence or by technology. You have to understand that you live in a system centered by a star and that you can reach out to the star at the center and on the other side reach out to the edge of your solar system see that you live in a galaxy, understand that there are millions and billions of galaxies out there, and that's the part that the people in the Moho discontinuity and their big computer wanted more than anything else. They wanted not simply to control this planet where they were born, but they wanted to control the entire structure of the universe. They believe that with the knowledge that you are now hearing disclosed by um, NASA, mostly, that job is done. There are still some questions that NASA has, but that the underground already knows the answers to and don't need any more information. So think of at the beginning of this walk to the mountain, a few million people go underground into the Moho discontinuity, which you can see on your telephone if you look up the name. as a little red line under um, the plates of the earth, just above the mantle. Mantle. Ant, M-A-N-T, mantle. This little gang of a few million people have walked under the mountain and out the other side and used the nuns, as in U-N, in English, and now, 8,000 years plus 2,000 years, that's the 10,000 years they had allocated for solving their problem. And therefore, everybody on the planet that you know and I know and we see and we read about and everybody, Chinese, Hindu, Japanese, all of those people are now useless to the project set up by the original people and should 
in the opinion of the persons who set it up be destroyed. Creation had given an authority to the nuns, Mother Superior, because that's what the nuns insisted would be the better system to run the world through them. Creation has seen that the nuns cheated along the way. They did not send back to creation the information that creation already knew, but kept the information for their own purposes. That is like the people who got on a ship in in England and and went to the United States before it was the United States. And then the King of England said, okay, you can establish 13 colonies there and you can have a governor and that governor can collect taxes and send back to England the share that England wants. And once that system was established, the current government of the time said, enough is enough. Why should we send the money back when in fact it's our money? Taxation without representation is something we don't want. What they didn't know is that there was a government within their government run by nuns. And they would then set up a system of stealing from the governors who had broken their word to the King of England. Now we've arrived at that point where seven and a half billion people have lived and died Most of them are stuck in the middle ground, which they call purgatory. Because they are no longer living. They are the non-livers. And the livers are basically slaves to the secret system run by the media with the money ending up in the hands of the nuns who then set up a system of stealing the money back from the corporate world People who play the stock market don't understand that it's not basically a fair deal because when prices go up, they believe they've made more money. But when the price of their stock bottoms out, they lose everything they have. And the only persons that can make the stock market rise and fall are the people who are the biggest investors of the stolen money 
out of the hands of the people who paid taxes on the planet. And that control allows them to raise prices, attract all the poor investors, and then drop the prices so that the funds that were in the hands of the poor moves to the hands of the middle class, the corporate world, and from the corporate world, it moves to the hands of the controllers and eventually back to the nuns who refuse to use it for the purpose that creation intended in the first place. So we have arrived, according to the cell, at that point in time where creation says enough is enough. The people are being used as unknowing pawns for a system on the back line of the chessboard that brings the funds into the hands of Mother Superior, and that has to stop. The king on the chessboard is not anything but a cosmetic leader. The queen on the chessboard has more power than the king, or anybody else for that matter. And the queen is represented is representative of mother superior so when you have a mother whose job it is to take it all in for herself and you seek in the bible what story would represent that occurrence is you have a person who is about to inherit from his father the entire world. And in a discussion with his brother, he says, I would give all of the things I will own in return for, in, in the language of the Bible, a mess of potash, which basically means a bowl of soup. And the brother makes a deal with him. Here's your bowl of soup. Now I will receive from our father the permission to own everything that you would have received. And the father being blind and on his deathbed thinks he's giving away his entire controlling interest to one son, but in fact he's giving it to the other son who cheated his brother out of his entire inheritance in return for a bowl of soup. You will notice that a bowl of soup Mess of potage is fish stew. If you take the translation literally, fish stew is when water comes on land and the fish are easy to pick up. 
And that's why the persons who have control are called superior. Soup. And why Mother Superior is about to use Lake Superior to make fish soup out of millions of slaves in the northeastern part of the United States and southeastern part of Canada. Now, for doing that kind of activity, getting rid of a population using different methods throughout the world, including weather. If you noticed over the last week or so, you had very cold weather with snow falling doesn't make any sense. Snow is supposed to fall when the temperature is close to zero. Then, right in at the end of the cold spell, overnight, for a period of 24 hours, it changed to rain, and 24 hours later, it changed back to cold again. And now you have probably the most dangerous walking or driving grounds you can imagine. city of Ottawa um, normally would have seven or eight accidents at supper time while people made their way home. They had over a hundred accidents on that day because you're on a skating rink. Now you can imagine what would happen if the wall, the most important wall in the Bible came a tumbling down. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came a tumbling down. Well, all we hear about in this period in time is it's time to build a wall. In the southern part of the United States and everybody is arguing but at the same time, forgetting that there is a much more dangerous situation of a wall in the northern part of the United States, and that wall is the northern part of Michigan. And when that wall comes a tumbling down, the intent is to wipe out a couple of hundred million people. So that the UN can take more direct control. The UN, of course, is a series of bureaucrats originating in Sweden, which is a bureaucratically controlled entity. Sitting in between the two biggest countries in the world are Russia and Canada, and Sweden sits there. Little country nobody pays attention to any more than they pay attention to nuns.
Now, if Mother Superior put in people in paradise that did nothing but provide misery, war, pestilence, famine, and disease so that we could all be tested one way or another to find out the answers to every known illness. They don't belong in paradise. And billions of people who are in the lineup waiting for a transfer can't go because they are not wanted by those people who already have taken their places. So what I've been asked to do is to begin a process through which a new understanding, a new overstanding of everything that has gone on in the past is now being disclosed. And that those people who help that disclosure will, in fact, be in line first up for entry into paradise as a transfer is done of people who are in waiting along with the people who help with the understanding, the new knowledge. In other words, a clear view. Life is all about a point of view. Point of view basically means what it says. Here on the property over the last summer, I did certain things on the front uh, field, and two of those things I did involved digging holes that are six feet deep. One half filled with rocks, the other one, nothing in the hole. And when people come here and they look at what I've done uh, from the street point of view, you can't see them. And I go out and I speak to them and I say, stand here and watch me. And what I want you to see and tell me if it's possible that I can walk across the fence and remain within the boundaries of this field that you see the fence all around and disappear. And they say, okay, let's see. So I walk around and I go in the field. And all of a sudden, I jump in a hole, which they didn't even know was there from the point of view of the field, of the uh, street. And I come back out. And I jump in the other hole. And then I go back out to the street. And I say, because your point of view is right here, 
You don't know what is going on over there because you don't even know it exists until you see me jump in the hole. Now, if you were raised up on a ladder or coming in on a helicopter, you would see me in the hole. That's only because you then would have a different point of view. Now, if you walk with me to the gate and you look past the gate, you'll see a bunch of chairs. And the first thing you'll notice and you'll tell me is, why do you have chairs in the middle when there's nobody to sit in them? And I tell them, that's your point of view. The real point of view is best explained to you by the question, what is the most important part of a book? Not its cover, because you see that clearly. Not its letters, you see them clearly. Not its chapters, you see them clearly. Not its paragraphs, you see them clearly. Not It's words and sentences, you see them clearly. What you don't have as a point of view is the things you call empty spaces. And yet, they are not empty. I'm a typographer by trade or by schooling and I can tell you every space is full. In the old days you used to assemble in a gadget called a California job case letters and put them together to make words and and the type was backwards so that when you printed it on paper, it would come right side up. However, every time there was a space, you had to put a block of type in there that had no face on it and therefore would not print. And today with electronic printing, what you have to do is put a code there that says, don't see anything here. But if you are like me, and you have a different point of view, because you've seen it from a different place, then you know that there's no such thing as an empty space. There's a space, but it ain't empty. And I'm telling you, there are chairs there and they're not empty. You can't see them because that's your point of view. In reality, they are occupied at any moment in time by non-living entities that used to live on Earth. And they need for you to grasp that concept if you are to survive and how you survive once 
you've changed your point of view from being used to seeing only humans and not seeing what they call holy ghosts or the part of you that I'm looking at right now when I look at a human being is what I see is the DNA. What I don't see is the electromagnetism part of you that turns you on when you wake up, allows you to move all of the switches that allow you to breathe, pull in the oxygen, pump your heart, all of those switches of which there are billions in a human body are operational in you alive today, but is operational when you are no longer living, that part of you walks away. In the same manner as I dug a hole and disappeared down a hole, you have to remember that there are ingredients that make up the DNA. But there are ingredients that you can see and ingredients that you can't see. There are six chemicals that have to be around to make life, life. You don't see them, but it doesn't mean it, they're not there. Oxygen, hydrogen, you know, all of those things are there. But you can't see them because you weren't told in a clear and concise manner what you're missing when you only believe what your eyes see. There is a more important set of eyes than the eyes you have in your head that look out the front above your nose. There is the eyes of the brain which is the pineal gland that stores all the things you've seen and memorizes that material inside your brain while you live. It walks out of you when you're no longer living. I don't like to use the term die anymore. It's just you moved on. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted to a different purpose. And the purpose right now is to save our ass before they do us all in. Because the people who are doing us all in, once they've completed their job, they will be done in. Because they were greedy and stupid enough to believe that the gang that controls the world from outside your point of view are not going to need them anymore. And until we can get enough people to see what has occurred, 
understand and overstand a different point of view, we're all in danger. Now, what creation has asked the cell to ask us to do is to say, life of human beings began on the planet, and I'm not going to explain everything I've told you many times before, when a cat picked up a child who would have died and fed it and set it on its path, and that child then moved on to a goat in order to feed itself and grow. And that child would have had to be a hermaphrodite because only the female body is equipped to give birth to clones of itself and later on the genders. So what we are arriving is at the end of the process. And we're not told anything about that gang of people that lived prior to the Ice Age and who they were and how knowledgeable they would have been. Hey, 100,000 years is a long time to learn things compared to what if, if you would remember the last three or 400 years, the improvement in people's knowledge that has occurred. But it's a fraction of the knowledge that the people who lived for hundreds of thousands of years but could not prove what they had come to believe until a laboratory would be set up to test all of their beliefs and to add information that comes along with little pieces you never even thought of before. And what they want us to do is to prepare a visual of the importance of cats to the birth of mankind and then the point at which it came to be a visual separation because of the Ice Age, 16,000 years of Ice Age, they got to hide everything they had done and go underground in the Moho discontinuity. Like I said, if if you don't believe the Moho discontinuity, discontinuity exists, look at the word in your telephone when you type it in. It'll bring up a slice of the planet Earth, and you can see the red line, which is below the plates of the Earth. The plates of the Earth are what feeds the laboratory. Below is the mantle. It's the home of the ants. And those who don't follow the process of going underground and then being crushed into a plate that goes into the fire and comes out and another place as something else out of a volcano, they don't understand where the term hell came from. If you want to understand where the word heaven comes from, think of you leaving your DNA 
to be subdivided and put into bottles so that it could be reassembled and make people with different personalities to do different jobs in the laboratory. And therefore, heaven is earth, surface of the earth where you now live. And the moho discontinuity is the place where the energy that we call electromagnetism, which allows for Earth to operate, exists in the moho discontinuity. If you can excuse me for a minute, I must go to the washroom. I apologize for the delay, but when it's uh, freezing way below zero, and you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah. I understand. So, remember, Jerd, is Danny there too? I'm here. Okay, that the important part is to know that what you see with your eyes and hear with your ears and smell with your nose and taste with your tongue is not all that really exists. There is a pre, a during, and an after. And the pre and the after, your point of view, is not sufficient to grasp the entire context that the cell has, for example. The cell, for the reasons they described as I earned it, have a choice of being seen or not seen. It's like a hologram. You can walk through it. And for me, they chose at a certain time to be seen, 2006, I think it was. For other people, until they have a clear view, beyond the overstanding that they have to this date, they cannot be seen. But I can guarantee you that even Donald Trump can be having the most secret meeting he can place on an island or someplace in in the Caribbean and sitting beside him or standing beside him are individuals who are not seen by anybody in the vicinity or figured out that there might be somebody in the room because there's no signal that picks them up. And they're sitting there or in the Kremlin or at 10 Downing Street or at 24 Sussex Drive, and... They're listening to everybody's conversation. And they're reporting back 
who's doing what, when and where, and what the ultimate problem would develop if what they are talking about would occur. And the question then becomes, does creation want to repair the problem or allow them to destroy themselves? So they came and said, this is our last chance. Nothing happens if creation says you don't do it. <clears throat> but if creation says these people are too stubborn to live into a world of sanity and therefore let them kill themselves. Let them destroy their planet. It's happened before and it might happen again. How do they destroy the planet? Well, one time in the past, uh, an asteroid coming out of the sky cleaned off what was there and started it over again. If you Another example of the world as we know it disappearing well we're on the verge of creation's decision and we've been given an opportunity to grasp the concept of a clear view If we don't, creation makes its decision based on that. If we do, creation makes a different decision based on that. 34.2 acres of land set aside for a knowledge center that would go from the cat to the end as we know it and the new world of overstanding or A cataclysmic event in each and every part of the world based upon these people are not repairable. They sold their rights, their property, their life in return for a bowl of fish stew, which is all that's needed for a person to swallow and choke. And you don't have to pick up a spoon because it'll come in our direction. And if we don't, then this piece of property may just end up being the target of a big, big rock coming in from space 
that would begin a process similar to the one that killed the dinosaur. It's basically been put in mine and your hands to see if there's a way for people to participate in a project that in 2020, as with the optometrist who makes my glasses, would tell me, I will see clearly. Well, we need to build glasses of the mind. So that our mind is no longer confused by the education it received solely from our eyes, our nose, our ears, our tongue, and add into that the part that is there but is not seen because of the fact we're not looking. And we're not looking because the media controls what we look at and what we know and keeps silent about what it knows that it should have shared long ago, but hasn't. My job, as well as managing this 34.2 acres, is basically to feel the pain and realize that cold is much more damaging than anything else. And that those people that continue to cause us the trouble shall be penalized in a manner that can best be explained by the lifestyle forced upon me without the privilege of friends like you. And Jennifer <clears throat> will receive or has been told that she or told to me to tell her that she will have the privilege of pardon, which will be taken away from Mother Superior. And therefore, she also is being put through a ringer, if you want to call it that, a, a terrible situation where she is made to deal with people who have lost their mind, who are often violent, and who she is in contact with on a shift by shift program and is forced to work under the conditions of 
go to work at 7.30 in the morning or go to work at 3 in the afternoon or go to work at 11.30 at night and do it with this group and do it with that group and do it with this group. And you never know who's coming out of the room who might want to hit you over their head with a bedpan or what have you. Um, you're dealing with with uh, people who represent all of us when we have been subject to surges in electricity that has changed the switching mechanisms in our brain. Now, a group like the bureaucrats at Hydro, the electric company, at Bell Telephone, the communications company, and the border guards who decide who lives where, contrary to politicians who believe they make the decisions, the border guards have told us they are the controllers. All of that leads down a path to the coming back of Haley's Comet, 2058, I believe. And what will occur? Well, people will tell you a comet is a comet and it goes around and around and around. If you give it a few billion years, you might find that one of the times it comes around, it hits something along the way, which then changes its direction that doesn't exist today and causes something to happen on the moon or on a planet, including Earth which can destroy everything there. Not destroy the universe, but the world as we know it. The atomic bombs are just rocks that come out of the sky. Nuclear power is just another kind of electromagnetism. Do we let it happen? Not until we understand and go beyond to overstand. I can tell you that I am surviving and my pain is nowhere close to what one could expect if creation says, let them kill themselves. I at least have people around, not on a daily basis, but often enough to know I'm not alone. I have... Uh, person that will uh, make certain 
that I get a bowl of soup every now and then or, uh, uh, without asking a uh, bowl of chicken noodle stew or soup without trading it for my freedom. Well, there's seven and a half billion people whose ghosts are waiting for freedom. And we've been told we can make it happen if we get enough people to develop what they want, which is basically a garden and a multi-stage um, garden at that, two or three stages high, a collection of solar power, a um, source of water, <clears throat> dig a well, and have the source of power uh, be controlled by the sun, not by Hydro Ontario, and build with that as a base of cats, a garden, water, and power, build a cat clinic and prepare 100 cats to lead the way to paradise for the people who deserve to be there and remove a substantial number of people from the middle ground purgatory into paradise deserved it, but never got That's what has to happen if creation is not to say, let them kill themselves. The creation is not a person. Creation is a process. It's a process that always gets to a choice of turning left or right down any particular path. And that process can save us if the direction is that way or allow us to kill ourselves if the choice is that that we are identified as unable to be assisted. As people with Alzheimer's are unable to be assisted because they don't have a point of view which is based on anything but themselves. Give up comfort is what I've been asked to do. Give up safety is what I've been asked to do. Do the work every morning when you get up to say, if that's the goal, what do I have? today in my hands that I can advance that goal. And whatever it is I can do that day, I do. At the expense of freezing 
my fingers more than anything else because I have to take my gloves off in order to do certain things that can't be done with gloves on. And knowing that when I leave the outdoors and come into the house, unlike all of my neighbors, it's not warm. It's just another part of being outdoors when I'm indoors. <laughs> Sometimes worse. Because when it's been cold outdoors, the house gets colder. And when it gets warmer outside and then cold again, the house never catches up. It just remains always cold in the house. I'm not alone. I've got cats. Cats seem to be able to handle cold much better than most humans. However, it depends on where they were acclimatized. A cat raised in California feels cold when it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I feel cold when it's 15 below. But when it's 40 below, we all feel cold. I have chosen to do what I can to advance the project. You two guys have chosen to hear me out and do what you can in whatever way you can. Jennifer puts her life in danger every day. Her peace comes when she goes home and has five cats. Her pain is not from cold. Her pain is from her work. Everybody's pain is different. Jennifer's role is giving the best life possible the people who cannot make that choice for themselves. Without ever expecting any thank you, more than often, never knowing when a punch in the stomach would come. Think of it when you think about the nurses around the world that have to care for people who cannot care for themselves. Every mother knows that about their child, but every child that grows up sometimes finds out about it when they have to take care of their senior parents, and I know you do, Jerry. Yeah. It's what we want to change. Can it be done? I believe it can. 
Jennifer is not certain that it can. And that's why we're different, because we approach the problem from two directions. And I believe her pain is much worse than mine. Her pain is not only physical, but psychological. I sit in a uh, house surrounded by houses, none of which have offered to help. I've been told by the cell, never refuse help. That's the way they earn the right to be in paradise. And I'm waiting. And not only have they not helped in the houses around me, is they don't even ask. They make a detour not to speak to me. Why? I don't know, except bureaucrats say I'm crazy. And they would rather believe the bureaucrats than come and see for themselves. If my neighbor next door said, what can I do to help? I would say, Take this extension cord and plug it in the outside of your house and I'll turn on a heater in my truck. And at the end of the month, bring me the bill and I'll pay you the bill for whatever it is your bill increased because of my heater. But has anybody ever asked? No. I have more people asking me what I, they can do when they live 15, 20 miles away in Kempville. People at the laundromat, people at the restaurant when I go to town, people uh, who drive the taxi. Uh, they all seem to know, but the media doesn't want to know. And the neighbors don't want to know. I mean, I've been here for 18 years. Did I ever do anything to hurt them or cause them a problem or whatever? No. Now, why would somebody who drives by seeing me have to shovel for three and a half, four hours after a snowstorm just to be able to get into the driveway and not say, hey, Just give me a nudge when you need me. I'll come over with my snowblower and we'll do in 10 minutes what it takes you three hours to do. And if you want to pay me, give me 20 bucks. No. They drive by slowly every day looking to see what has changed, not for the purpose of helping, but for the purpose of talking about what's Keeley doing today to their gang. And they cannot know what Keeley is doing from their point of view. <laughs> yeah. You 
mean, people before when I had electricity would come from all over the world, and when they left, they felt, and I know because they told other people that for the first time in their lives, and some were seventy years old. I feel like I know more now than I have at any time before I went to Keeley. And I didn't know half then of what I know now. And I learn every day. And I could learn a lot more if I had a communications network that I could trust. But I got Bell Canada that I can't trust. And I got 2,000 voices, apparently, or ears, I guess you'd call them, listening in when I talk on the telephone. So I have no secrets. And if they hadn't caused me so much trouble, I wouldn't have had to shut down the paper because Google can go on the net and change anything they want from what I've said. And, you know, 5,000 postings later, you don't know uh, what was changed today. They don't want people to hear, and they make it as difficult as possible. But we continue, and we will continue, and we will succeed if we continue. Any questions before I go to bed? <laughs> At this point, Glenn, if I ask you any questions, it'll, uh, you'll probably lose sleep. Because <laughs> um, this is the question I wanted to ask you last time, <laughs> but um, you were, it was the same situation. Yeah. If it, if okay, I'll ask a question. But if it's, you feel like it'll take too long to answer it, I'll save it for next time. Shoot. Okay. So I know, like when you when when you're remembering about like what happened in the past from previous lives, stuff like that. Um, how, how do you, how does that work for you? How do you, um, how does that process work for you? How do you sort out that memory from what's real, what's fake, and formulate it into uh, something that other people can understand? Well, first of all, you don't know when you're born in this life. You don't, you're not allowed to recall other past lives. However, there is a transfer mechanism. And it's, it's um, hard to, to explain but it's linked to art. Oh. And, and everybody who deals in an artistic endeavor is dealing with memory. A painter of a portrait or a drawing 
is not making up something when they put it down on paper. What they are able to do is um, access a switch in their brain that those who are not artistic-minded don't know about and can't access it because it's not a switch that you discover all of a sudden. It is a switch that is either on or not on in the first year of your life. That switch is linked to the female breast below the nipple, above the breast, in the same way as the moho discontinuity is below the surface. So the top part, the nipple, is where you feed. But information that opens the switch comes from having your lips on the outside of the areola, what is called mammary is the breast, the areola, is the circle around the nipple. While you are being fed the milk of your mother, there's a process that goes on and says, I have now got contact with a pair of lips And I can send information through the lips to the brain of the person that is there. In the same way that has been copied with uh, computers, my telephone has a UBS port. I plug the phone into electricity outlets or a bank of solar electricity, and it turns on switches in my phone. Well, that concept was copied from female breasts And only the nuns knew about it. And that's why corporations pushed to have women buy their food at the drugstore. Nestle's or whatever to feed their children from a bottle because when you're not in contact with the areola for the first year, and the longer in that first year, the better, the more switches get open in your brain and those switches are linked to memory of things that occurred when you were first made all the way through to when you were more often made. Now, 
this process doesn't stop <coughs> when you're one year old. If a man and a woman who are in their 50s understand the process, the man can open switches by placing his lips on his wife's areolas and switches open. And much of that can be seen in adults who change direction in what they do the older they get. Because it comes in spurts. So memory, I am told now, which I didn't know before, um, that because I have had many partners over my life, um, I have substantially more memory than most about things that occurred in the past. But with the addition of the cell telling me the parts that I was missing in different places and that I thought was important and they filled me in on stuff, I've been told that my uh, talent is is basically what it's called, um, and everybody has some talent. Uh, some comes with birth, but not many uh, special talents come in the first year, as I said. Um, my talent is... Um, to see, hear, smell, and taste things that all come together all the time. When I'm meeting somebody, when I'm talking to a group of people or whatever, I am getting data which my head computes to give me information. Other people might learn to dance. Some might learn to sculpt. My sculpting was of words. Why did they write this word to mean that? And call sculptor, call part of it means basically separate the information and make sure you place it in the right place or it'll rot and you'll forget it. Unfortunately, when I speak to people, I appear to be preoccupied. I'm not a person for small talk. And most of the people that I worked with all my life, and Jennifer has the same story, is <coughs> they're, um, they go to the lunchroom, they have a break, they, you know, talk about children and weddings and all of that stuff. I can't do that. I am focused on gathering information that fills the gaps in my brain and what I have been able to do, I have all the women that I've met 
over more than just a day or two, to thank for their contribution through their areola to the development of my thinking process. The cell tells me that Jennifer has been made 37 times to go through the process of not living, living, and not living 37 times. And I have been through the process because my task is not as specific as hers uh, 700 times. The beginning date of my and Jennifer's birth is the same. Although she is 14 years younger, at the beginning we were apparently in the same uh, household and uh, it's complicated but we are twins born 14 years apart. Her direction went one way. My direction went another way. My task was different than hers. But the end goal is the same. I believe it can be accomplished. She doubts whether it can be accomplished, not because of only what she's learned here, but by looking at her paintings, I know that she has memories that I don't have and that she can sit down and draw something, and I, I can never figure out how anybody could do that. Um, but nobody can figure out how I think either, so you know, we're different. But it all depends on how much of the information out of the past you are getting from your mother and from your girlfriends and from everybody that's not part of the formal system is more likely to be helpful on the art side. And, and I think if you look around, artists uh, are usually poor because they're bringing you closer to the truth through their art. And that way, the mother superior would want to control it. And mother superiors in times past <coughs> said that, you know, if the breast serves that purpose, we got to hide it. And today, women wear bras, not because they decided, but because the system controlled by nuns who wore clothing from top of their head to the ankles so you couldn't see anything, decided that if they couldn't make you wear the same clothes they do, that at least you would not be topless because the breast was designed to attract males. And if males go for women when they see breast, they're going to get into the network that turns on switches. And the nuns don't want that to occur because that is competitive to what they want. They allow things they want and deny us things we want. 
And that's not always money. Interesting. Uh, uh, thanks, Frank. Did I answer your question? Yeah, Glenn, you, you did. <laughs> Pretty thoroughly. Hmm. I have something to, to, uh, to... I have something to mulch on. I have to sit back and think about that. Yeah. Think about yeah. Mozart. <laughs> yeah. Think about uh, how does a guy sit down and write music? You know? How does a, a ballet dancer do the acrobatics that they do? Who choreographed all of this stuff? Why is it they can do it and I can't? No. Can't okay. play the music except if it's called a radio. I definitely thought about uh, that makes sense what you said about the art. And I don't forget it's linked to the word rat, eh? <laughs> Lead the way. <laughs> And rat is at the beginning following the ant when they go indoors to the caves, whereas the ants come out of the caves and go outdoors to collect, then the rat is indoors in a basement in an attic in a hole in the ground and the same word is art. And it's linked to a cover-up, which is called tar. Tar on the road covers up the gravel and makes it easier to get by without noticing what's in the road. Well, that's what art is all about, and all art is, is a memory of what the people before the Ice Age knew. And of course, if you paint something, and it may open people's eyes and understanding, then the church would run out and buy it and hide it away in the Vatican or on the ceilings of the Vatican where they know that the people won't be there long enough to understand what it all meant. They make their artists, the ones that portray the things they want portrayed, they make them rich. The ones who make art that they don't want other people to know about, they make them poor. Or kill them. Or kill them, yeah. Hmm. It's the world we live in that is um, what it is because of misunderstandings about the meaning of the word truth because the people responsible for sharing truth are guilty of a crime of omission more than commission. They do not tell you what they know. <clears throat> if anything 
that they tell you might make you a better person than the slave they want doing the task they want. They don't assist you. They make sure that you don't have access. And for women who for thousands of years walked around topless, they changed it in a matter of, what, a couple of hundred years? And made it impossible for women to walk in a normal society topless because it attracts and speaks to men. And they don't want men to know what it is they know. Because what they know is in a central deep, deep, deep database. There is a a place on this planet that has all the knowledge of over 100,000 years of experiment and accident. And very, very few have access. And, and if you wanted a name for it, you'd call it the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant is a box with two confronting pieces of metal. And obviously, that would be an electric circuit where you would get a spark jumping across. And electricity is the basis of non-existing, existing, non-existing. The Ark of the Covenant. The contract is hide in the box. And the knowledge of the Ark of the Covenant, obviously, according to their story, was stolen out of Israel and hidden in some place in Africa on a little island in a little country, you know. But when they tell you stuff like that, it's probably not true. But it's the concept of having a hidden secret And if people learn to come here and put a toonie in the tub, they are basically getting access to a large part of the secret. And therefore, you can say, what will you find at 908 County Road 18? Ark of the Covenant would be a reasonable response. Not a gold box, but the information about what the gold box meant. Okay, I gotta go. Good night, Glenn. Live long, I love you. Live long. Thank you. Love you, too. Bye for now. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. Bye.